World War II Online, I just wanted to show you uh, our new player place objects that we've just introduced into the game. Uh, so you're looking right now at the tank trap. This is a player placed object placed by the engineer class only. The only thing that can kill it is high explosive satchels and other HE like bombs for example. Big heavy stuff, this can take a lot of damage. Uh, bolt action riflemen have been equipped now with a single high explosive satchel to help clear not only this obstacle, but these other player place objects that you see in the screen, which we'll go over in just a second. So again, this can only be placed by the engineer and uh, you can place multiple. All of these you can place again with the exception of the mobile spawn. They all have a cooldown timer. The mobile spawn, which is on the right side of the screen right here, uh, that is the new fortified mobile spawn. We're going to go over there in just a second and explain what's going on there. Um, you can only have one mobile spawn per mission. Okay, so this is the tank trap. You recognize this one most likely. It's been around since the beginning of player place objects. Uh, this is previously known as the infantry fighting position. It's a very simple structure with a couple sandbags and a nice little shooter's nest right there. Uh, this is still placeable by most infantry and um, this is now destructible. It's not an invincible object. Okay, this is one of the other new objects as well. This is obviously sandbags. It's a sandbag barrier. It's placeable by the engineer class and the bolt action rifleman class only. We chose to do that to try and uh, give the bolt action rifleman class a little bit more um, importance and also uh, some more leverage on the battlefield. Okay, now this is the gun emplacement. Uh, you should be very familiar with this. Right here, uh, the engineer class is the only class capable of building this. And of course, you see the sandbags and a little slit there for any uh, guns that can fit inside of here. Uh, pack 40s, two pounders, other things like that. An 88 is definitely not going to fit in here or anti-aircraft weapons. Okay. Now we took this object and we said, you know what? This would be a cool idea if we could make a mobile spawn out of it. So again, this is the front end of the gun emplacement, which we've had for a while. This is the new fortified mobile spawn. And some big differences you can tell right out the gate is that this whole wall has been built up and we've also added some earth. If you look closely, you will see some shooter ports as well right here on that end and on this end. We chose not to have it directly in the center for obvious reasons. We wanna try and reduce the camp potential as much as possible. This whole structure is an absolute beast. Uh, again, it's very familiar. There's a quick, nice little comparison view. Uh, it's very similar to the gun emplacement. It is the gun emplacement, just modified differently. And uh, this is the, what the backside of it looks like. You'll notice a country flag is here, so you know what country it belongs to and attack it accordingly, or get resupply from it. This does resupply units on the ground now. Uh, here are the shooter ports. We originally had people spawn inside of this, but uh, the next thing I'll tell you is the uh, light anti-tank guns, like the Pac-36 and 2-pounder, and uh, the French equivalent as well, it's a 25mm, the, and the light anti-aircraft, you know, the, the Flak-30 and the, um, the other 25mm uh, anti-aircraft weapon, they were getting clipped inside of here, so what we decided to do is place it right here. This is the spawn point area. You spawn about right here. And we're kind of, we're working on that. We want to improve that if we can. Uh, again, it's still pretty tight, so if you fortify accordingly, you are a little bit exposed here in the back, but that, that part's intentional. This will be facing forward to wherever the enemy is. And you can come in here and defend. And we also have uh, something kind of cool right here. We were building this and going, you know what, how can we, how can we educate our players a little bit on you know, how to build and protect, communicate, execute uh, your fortified mobile spawn. Then we realized, hey, we need to do more to try and get people in TeamSpeak and push voice comms because we all know that that makes the gameplay a lot better. So we put this here and there's a nice coffee stain and Kilroy was here, for example. And uh, of course, why not mention becoming a builder is very helpful to us. So we had the sort of the war bonds looking sort of thing there and uh, this is very useful. So this object is tremendously awesome. It can be immediately defended by infantry in this area and also on the corners. And instead of having to tow light anti-tank guns and uh, flak 30s, for example, or you know anti-aircraft, we, we set it up to where you can spawn the most basic version. And that makes it very powerful in the initial tier zero. 
but it, as you progress throughout the tiers, those same that same equipment from tier zero is only available here, and therefore their uh, stuff becomes obsolete to heavy armor and medium armor, and it's only good for like you know vickers, uh, panhard, you know armored cars, 232s, um, daimlers, other trucks, things of that nature, and again a very light purpose uh, for anti-aircraft. So. Uh, it's immediately defendable, and that's what we wanted. We wanted to sustain gameplay quite a bit, and I think uh, we're going to achieve this. We're also bringing the battles out of the cities now and onto the frontier, and the, it's been very awesome to see in-game. It's kind of hard to tell right now because we're in the offline mode, as mentioned earlier, uh, because it was busy in-game, but we'll post some videos for you guys to see what it's like inside of game as well. It's been very busy. Okay, Now, what's this thing? That's ammunition inside. We're going to replace this texture because we want to do that. Maybe even the wood. Uh, this is a resupply point now. And a truck can place this object as well as the fortified mobile spawn. They can also place the old uh, field resupply unit. We've changed the name to that to urban mobile spawn because it can only be used inside of big cities. Obviously, if you think of this thing being inside of, say, Antwerp or Brussels or a big city like that, uh, your ability to place them is going to be pretty uh, pretty tight it's gonna be tough so we elected to have the urban mobile spawn to ensure gameplay remains intact those more cumbersome objects which were the boxes with the flag draped over it um, which I don't have ready for you to see here at the moment uh, th those can still be placed but only in urban environments they cannot by default according to the code they cannot be placed on this type of terrain uh, which is good. We don't want that. We don't want people... We want direct action to take place and not so much of the sneaky mode stuff. So back to this uh, box of ammo here. We call this the ammo cache. And here's what's cool about this. You can deploy many of these on a single mission. And what makes that unique is... It, it, can you imagine all the times when you've had a mortar team that needed ammunition, but we're firing way too close to the mobile spawn point. And people are like, hey, stop shooting here. That's not good. And they're like, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. Well, instead you would have to drive your own truck and then, you know, uh, sit there and that's a big object and now your mortarman team is gonna be uh, found. So this makes it uh, very advantageous to allow a mission leader to not despawn his truck, but to deploy his, not only his mobile spawn, but also several ammo caches, uh, which is on a cooldown timer and they last about 20 minutes. Um, out in the field unless you walk over them or somehow reactivate that timer um, as a character. It's really a cool idea. You can mark it on the map and we are working on creating icons that will, will eventually display these resupply points. They do not resupply the enemy, they resupply your guys only. And we probably want to add a little texture on there like a, a some sort of flag or other recognition that this is an allied or axis box. We'll work on that. Uh, but this just stuck, got in the game, all these objects. All these objects are destructible now. There are no such things as invincible PPOs. Uh, we wanted that to happen so we didn't bottleneck gameplay. And people are building like crazy. Uh, I'll turn on my UI now. And I'm going to hit my 9 key. That's my PPO build tool. So you see at the top it says aim to cycle, fire to build. So you're looking at a green transparent object. That means you can place it. That's the uh, foxhole. If you right click, you now see your gun emplacement. I'm too close to the other objects. There we go. This is your sandbags and this is your tank trap. And this is the engineer class and it's the most powerful class by now. And uh, yeah, you can just scroll through and have fun. I'll go ahead and build this really quickly. These are the sandbags. And what I'm gonna do and show you here is you will be able to place this player place object, it will automatically start its cooldown timer and you can cycle between your objects so you can place more at a single time. So it's not, it's no longer one PPO per player or vehicle. And you again, see right here, okay. So my uh, sandbag cooldown timer, which means when I can place it again next is already clicking and I'm placing another object right now. So they're all on their own individual timers, which makes it very cool to spawn up multiple objects. And that's, that's what we want. Okay, so you can see the sandbag cooldown timer right here. It's almost halfway ready before I can deploy the next sandbags. 
So these are our player place objects that we now have in game. Hop in the campaign, we hope to see you there. There's probably a lot of questions you still have. We encourage you to get in game, go on the forums or ask us on uh, one of our Friday updates. Let us know your feedback. And uh, these are really cool. They're revolutionizing the way that players interact with the game and completely changing the landscape in which battles are fought. Uh, there, one thing can be said for sure, this is having a huge impact on gameplay. And thus far, the players are very excited. They're building like crazy and battles are completely being redone in terms of uh, the way that they work out. So thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.